We respectfully acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Euro Nation. We are recording this presentation on their traditional lands, an area known today as Sydney, Australia. We also acknowledge and thank all of the indigenous Australians who have utilized the collections and services of archives and libraries across, across the country. This interaction has informed and continue to inform processes that aim to facilitate respectful and thoughtful access to indigenous collections. Knowledge is power. By extension, the language utilized to control, disseminate and record knowledge can actually challenge or sustain existing power dynamics. In libraries and archives across Australia, the power over Aboriginal artefacts and record is complicated by competitive interest, various approaches to collection development and management, as well as a constantly changing political context. This paper explores the idea of power in the context of Australian Indigenous collections through three different points of view that serve to highlight some of the ethical and logistical issues that circulate around key three areas. Reclaiming power, exploring how Aboriginal communities can connect with this historical text, documenting culture, language and events to understand the past and inform the future. Returning power, exploring the role of cultural institutions in the repatriation of cultural patrimony and enabling connections with collections, and giving up claims to power and the ownership of knowledge exploring how every citizen can contribute to the restoration of power to facilitate the return of knowledge to traditional owners. These three points of view, presenting as the three short case studies, are offered in combination with a reflection on how the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Library Information Resource Network Protocols for libraries, archives and information services, often referred as the Atselin Protocols, or more simply, as the Protocols, could have contributed to each situation presented. The Asseline protocols, unpacked briefly here, have been designed to guide various interactions between archives and libraries, as well as other types of collecting institutions, and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in the communities that these various organisations serve. David Henlon has noted that we cannot fool ourselves into ignoring the ways in which knowledge services power and how knowledge in the service of power is collected, housed, catalogued and preserved. Aboriginal people in Australia have a difficult relationship with various types of collecting institutions, including archives and libraries. This is primarily an outcome of the nature of the collections that these institutions hold. Anne-Laura Stoller describes these collections, particularly earlier colonial collections, as containing the written traces of colonial lives and suggests that these commitments to paper and the political and personal work that such inscriptions perform serve as sites of the expectant and conjured about dreams of comforting futures and forebodings of future failures. In the Australian experience, it has been acknowledged that Indigenous people have been historically dislocated from various types of materials collected about their history and heritage. Henrietta Formal clearly articulated the tensions around awareness, access, ownership and control in her 1989 landmark article, Who Owns the Past? Aborigines as Captives of the Archives. It is important to recognise that archives and libraries are not neutral spaces. Their collections are developed and affected by power relationships. Indeed, the exercise of power dominates these organisations that are popularly believed to be founded upon the principles of egalitarianism, free and equal access to information for all. Such power is ex executed through processes that support acquisitions, as purchases and as the acceptance of artefacts offered as donations. Throughout such processes, decisions are continually made, consciously and unconsciously, that impact upon what is promoted as the truth. Collection development policies have the power to silently privilege some truths while silencing other truths. In this way, some collections are positioned as authoritative and serve by default to, to devalue other points of view. These collections have the capacity to move beyond Indigenous-focused collections to other collections held in, within the institution, thus shaping an entire institution's view of Indigenous Australia. 
In turn, these collections shape the view of those accessing these histories. Silence in this way can be systematically reinforced, often unknowingly, for as Eric Kettler has written, every interaction, intervention, interrogation and interpretation by creator, user and archivist is intentionally or unintentionally enforced by power. Each of these activations leave fingerprints which are attributes to the archive's infinite meaning. First published in 1995, the Atsalone Protocols serve as a tool to guide interaction with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, collections and services. The protocols are, as articulated by Atsalone, intended to guide libraries, archives and information services in appropriate ways to interact with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the communities which the organisations serve and to handle materials with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander content. They are a guide to good practice which will need to be interpreted and applied in the context of each organisation's mission, collections and client community. The protocols address the recognition of the moral rights of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the owners of their knowledge. Other important issues arising from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander content and perspectives in documentary materials, media and traditional cultural property. Issues in access to libraries, archives and information resources by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Encouragement for both the involvement and the participation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the governance and operations of libraries, archives and information services and appropriate representation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and their cultures in libraries, archives and information services. This presentation has highlighted the Atsalon Protocols and their importance. Our three case studies, detailed in our formal paper, come from three different points of view. Case study one. Case study one will discuss protocol number eight. It will look at employment and how the inclusion of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples within organisations can change organisations for the benefit for all. It will discuss the reclaiming of power, exploring how Aboriginal communities can connect with historical texts, documenting culture, language and events to understand the past and inform the future. This case study is presented from the perspective of an Australian Indigenous archivist. Case study two. In case study two, I will discuss protocol two. With a focus on the Rediscovering Indigenous Languages project at the State Library of New South Wales, which seeks to balance collections by acquiring material by and about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, returning power, exploring the role of cultural institutions in the repatriation of cultural patrimony, and enabling connections with collections. This case study is presented from the point of view of an Italian researcher, recently arrived in Australia. Case Study 3. Case Study 3 explores Protocol 9, emphasising the need for all collecting institutions to ensure their staff are appropriately prepared to deal with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander materials. This looks at giving up claims to power and the ownership of knowledge, exploring how every citizen can contribute to the restoration of power to facilitate the return of knowledge to traditional owners. This case study comes from the point of view of an Australian woman of European descent. To conclude, we have endeavoured through this short presentation to highlight some of the historical issues that construct common views around Indigenous collections. In addition, we have highlighted that there are many opportunities that arise from exploring tensions they may be evident in archive and library collections. It is essential that collecting institutions across Australia and around the world continue to work towards with staff from different backgrounds so that all those who work within the information services industries 
can be professionally engaged to promote and explore in strategic and thoughtful ways Aboriginal materials in archives and libraries. Thanks for the attention.